I shoot a lot of my videos with APS-C cameras. That means they are not stabilized and also the lenses, mostly for APS-Cs, are not stabilized. So I thought I'm gonna buy a gimbal and it will solve all my problems. Unfortunately, the truth is a little bit different. So in this video, I wanna tell you the eight things I wish I would know before I bought the gimbal, how it actually turns out to be. Let's go. So the first thing is that there is a, a pretty big misconception. The gimbal does not stabilize everything and you will still need to do a ninja walk. All right, the second thing is the wider the lens, the more stable the footage will look like. And if you have something like 16 millimeters on your gimbal, then you can pretty comfortably walk around. It's gonna be fine. Anything above 35 millimeters and you will start noticing the shake even if you are using the gimbal. And the more zoomed in you go with like 50 or 85 millimeters, forget it, it's almost impossible to use. Number three, the closer you are to the object, the more noticeable the shake will be. For example, here, if I would be filming something like this and the camera is catching this wall, then you definitely will notice all the movements when the gimbal is being moved up and down. So if you want uh, less shake footage, then definitely uh, turn to uh, somewhere away from the objects, like in the middle of the street and so on. Number four, pair a wide angle lens with a really slow motion and you will be able to actually even run. So in this example, I'm using a 16 millimeter uh, Sigma lens without any image stabilization or uh, any OSS and shooting at 120 frames per second and you can see that the operator is actually running uh, and that gives you a very smooth footage. Number five, if you're using the uh, full frame cameras and full frame lenses, this, the footage will be a lot more stable because usually the lenses, especially the zoom ones, comes with optical steady stabilization and almost all of full frame cameras has the in-body image stabilization. So pair all of those things with the gimbal, it is gonna give you a really nice and smooth footage. However, point number six, you will get tired. The heavier the setup, definitely you're gonna get more tired of setting the things up and, and, and carrying all this heavy weight. So what I recommend is for you to actually get one of these things, which is the, the extra handle uh, I have currently here from Small Rig, and it just allows you to uh, have the, the stability on both of the hands since you get tired a lot less. Another thing is if your gimbal is straight up like this, then you will actually see a lot of this uh, up and down movement. So what I recommend is to for you to lean the gimbal a little bit more forward because it allows you to, uh, the gimbal kind of takes away a little bit of that movement when you're walking up and down. So this top handle actually helps you do that because you can grab it like this and hold it. Uh, otherwise you will be have to holding it like this and this is a little bit uh, too tiring for you, especially if you have a big rig on top of the gimbal. Number seven, actually you will use the gimbal a lot less than you think you will use. And because of all of these things that I just mentioned, first of all, it is a pain in the ass to carry it around. It is pain in the ass to set it up and it just gets very tired by trying to find a space in your bag and trying to set it up. So when you are setting it up, make sure you take your time on setting it up. Do it once, do it properly and you will be faster off, you can go. And the last point, do not overpay for the gimbal because each gimbal has uh, their own payload. So for a mirrorless camera, a small one like this, a Sony A6000, you don't need the biggest uh, gimbal like the RS2, for example, because those are, first of all, very expensive. They are also capable of carrying a, a big load. And the third thing, they are much heavier and bigger than the smaller gimbal. So if you're shooting with mirrorless cameras, then definitely check out the smaller models because it will allow you to save space, save money, and save the back pain as well. All right, guys, I really hope you in the end will actually get the gimbal because I think it's a really cool thing to have. Uh, it helps a lot in your work and uh, yeah, go out and keep on creating. I'll cover like this. No, it's so windy here. Are you recording? Shit, dog. How much do you see in the frame? Is it recording? Um, 
we'll wait for the ambulance to go away. Okay, so ambulance is away. Uh, we can start recording now.